Do you remember those soup can walkie-talkies, tin can walkie-talkies that some of us made as kids? Uh, I made them. My dad made them with me. Uh, I got to thinking one day, would it be possible to make a set of those across the Cumberland River here in Nashville, Tennessee? Uh, I called a friend of mine, Trevor Silva, a fantastic drummer and also uh, quite the interesting entrepreneur and idea man. He's got a soap company. Uh, he's a woodworker, he runs farmers markets and all manner of other things. Uh, I called him one day and I said, Trevor, have you ever thought about making soup can walkie talkies across the Cumberland River? And he said, I can't believe you're calling to ask me that. Just this morning, I was thinking about that. So we decided to do it. Uh, and this video uh, more or less documents as much as uh, two people doing this project themselves can document it, uh, although his wife Jen did. Uh, come help out quite a bit with us uh, doing it on the day off, but we set the target date of a Saturday morning at 9.30 in the morning and uh, got our butts in gear, got rolling, and uh, so yeah, uh, watch if you're interested to see how that turned out. Um, I hope to later write a song about it. Um, I wonder if Trevor will make a wood carving uh, that represents it. That's a nod to you, Trevor. Um, yeah, so uh, stay tuned and uh, see if you find it as interesting as we did. So for materials, we thought we should probably use the largest uh, soup cans we could find. So a few friends in the restaurant industry, thank you, Daniel and Sam, helped us out there. And a couple of physicist friends suggested nylon cord. So we bought a thousand feet of that as well as a thousand feet of twine as a backup. Uh, so you're looking at images now of what we purchased and made ready and had friends help us to gather for our materials. Good morning. It's April 3rd. This is James Tristan Redding. My friend Trevor Silva and I are taking this morning a bunch of oversized soup cans, courtesy of my friend Daniel, and a thousand feet of rope of a couple different types down to the Cumberland River. We're going to make tin can walkie-talkies across the river and see if we can hear each other. I'll put it together in a video here and share it on social media. Hopefully uh, someone finds this as entertaining as we do. All right, here we are. We're in the car. We've got uh, stuff locked and loaded. We're actually gonna go to Trevor's place real quick here and puncture, drill the, the holes in the tin cans before we get to the river. So you see we're, we're practicing safe walkie-talkie making with our masks. Uh, and we'll see if the uh, walkie-talkies can pick up the sound even through that. And part of the reason we're going to use a drill is we don't want the uh, rough edges of the metal can to fray the string. So that's part of our process. And tune back in here when we get to uh, Trevor's place. Are you going to do four of them? So we're going to do four with the nylon and four with the twine. Yep. All right. And you're gonna look like an idiot walking across the bridge right. yep. with four cans. Yep. The nice thing about this is I usually just look like an idiot anyway. At least this way I've got four cans with me. And you have a reason. Uh, and a reason. Four cans is your reason. <laughs> so that should work. That seems good. As you can see here, courtesy of my old roommate. Yep. Sam H. We got pork and beans. Showboat. Are we gonna drill a tape in here? I don't, brother. Sorry. I have duct tape. Oh, that side came off. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. We need just a nail punch. We'll work to smooth this out. Here. We don't want the the rope getting caught on sharp edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I'm happy you're doing this because I was thinking like tape might be the answer on the string, but that would just dampen it further. Duct tape is usually the answer, <laughs> just not in this one situation. <laughs> All right, this one's gonna be. And Jim, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> none yet. I'm just waiting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casual observer. What's your uh, What's your hypothesis on this? As um, a scientist, resident scientist. I really think that thickness, the tension that's going to be required on the uh, string, um, really, uh, I don't know that it's going to work. Might be higher than we can yeah. produce. Yeah, because I mean, the amount of tension that you'll need for the vibrations to yeah. work between them. Based on that distance, I don't, you know, I don't know what the tensile rating of the string is. I bet the, I bet this one. 
The twine's gonna pop. Yeah, this one's gonna pop in my mind. This one, will, this one probably won't. Oh. But don't worry, like at that distance, having it sag and be in the Cumberland, and then with the the amount of current that we've been having, uh, again, I think it's going to be more than what probably y'all could hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I'm thinking. Well, the, the twine, I mean, I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be able to hold the tension. We no, need. I don't think it will either. The tarp breaks all. The, I mean, we can't even. You can't even tie a tarp up in it. And up in a, uh, okay. A cotton, a cotton thread would have been in our, our string would have been our other bet, but yeah, I think the nylon might be our yeah. our winner. Our winner yeah. here. The nice thing about the twine is that is that when it breaks, you guys can just use it for your soap company. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and there's plenty of it there to use. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So these all these fit. This is gonna be. I mean, you're gonna have to get down on it, but. Yeah, very good. It's gonna be one of those things, but it gets through. Yep. And then I've got, this is what I brought. I brought two washers, and I'm gonna have to grab more now that I know we have more cans, and two dowels. Oh, but good. let's do, uh, let's grab a couple more washers. Gary. Gary. We're gonna throw that for you? Will you let me? No, you're not going to let me. <laughs> All right, we're back in the car again. Trevor, as you were saying. So, since we're going to be across the river from each other and we are both going to be uh, filming live, or at least I'll be filming live, you'll be filming uh, with your camera, uh, we won't be able to contact each other. And we're big enough children to do walkie-talkies, can string can walkie-talkies across the Cumberland, but not to actually own real walkie-talkies. So we won't be able to communicate with each other. So we need to have some hand signals. I think that um, once you get across the bridge and you're, you're set in your spot, or if I'm walking, I don't know, we haven't rock bowed for that yet, but whoever is the, the walker, once you get set and you get your washers tied in and you get your um, dowels tied in, uh, however many cans we're doing, but once you get all that tied in, we're gonna have a thumbs up after that, and then when you're ready to pull, you're gonna give a, a let's see, what do you think? Maybe like a one of those numbers, like you're pulling back, both hands. Yeah, that could okay. work. So then... you're you're about to pull back, just one hand like that. Yeah. So you start to pull tension. I'll get my dowel in there to hold it tight, uh, so you're not pulling straight against the washer in the can. Um, and we'll do one at a time. Once you get taut, I'll give you a. A fist when I feel there's actually tension pulling against it and we'll stop there and then we'll from that point on we'll just incrementally yeah tighten it up yeah um, and then at that point we'll be able to communicate with each other because we'll have a walkie-talkie <laughs> across the river so no more hand signals necessary <laughs> right perfect yeah all right that's what I thought so here we are in the elevator going up to I guess this is the John Thiegel Thiegel th 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 Thistle th Thiegel Thiller you said it first. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the pedestrian bridge. This is where we think we're going to uh, stake our claim at the uh, weirdest walkie-talkies in the world prize. Um, one of us is going to stay put somewhere on this side of the bridge, um, hold on to our cans. Uh, yeah, this actually isn't a bad little spot here to be holding on and I think that's yeah, enough. You're going to have to hand that around. If you yeah, I don't that's know good. if that'll work. Why don't y'all just do it on the bridge? And we like, could. I mean, honestly, because you're still over the Cumberland. Still, uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, yeah, I think try that. I think that's better. Yep. Yeah. We'll see which, uh, <laughs> and then over there, there's the, uh, the James Robertson. Over there we've got the, the Shelby Korean Vets. Considering doing either one of them, but uh, we'll try this one first probably. All right, well, we're about to go Facebook Live. We think we're gonna try the uh, pedestrian bridge here. We're gonna actually try it just down the, down the straightaway here, the walkway on the left-hand side that seems to be used less often than the other one. We're gonna probably have both of us stand on these little planter things to gain a little elevation here and that way we have a clear line of sight to each other across the way so there's Trevor 
and Jen, and they're gonna turn on this Facebook Live, and I'm gonna probably walk across the bridge and uh, make swimming movements while I do it, as though we're really traversing the river. So thank you to uh, whoever made this bridge. As I was reading some history about it, actually, it seems like it originally had a different name, and then they named it after uh, John in honor of his, what he did for the community, is that right? I know he, he saved someone on it. Someone was gonna kill I themselves. Don't, I don't know. Can I just make That's an interesting cool, would... observation here? Yeah. For the hashtag cans across the Cumberland, there's fewer than a thousand posts. <laughs> Somebody has tagged that. Well, that's presumably bachelor parties uh, that have tagged that. Ah. <laughs> so here I go, walking across the John Siegel Sailor pedestrian bridge and uh, pulling with me as I go a thousand feet of nylon cord uh, on a little metal dowel on this bracing it against my chest to get some tension here. And uh, I measured the length of the bridge before I started this uh, with the best ruler that is known to man. It's called the internet. Uh, turns out anything you want to know the length of, uh, you can just look it up online. I don't make that dirty, um, but I just looked up the length and sure enough, there was uh, somebody knew how long it was. So that's why I ordered a thousand, thousand feet because the bridge is 700 some. So uh, once we get across there we're gonna stand on these little planter things here uh, and that's how we'll be able to get the en enough elevation to be able to uh, get it off the ground because there is a curve to the bridge. I don't want to get in an argument with any flat earthers about whether there's, an arg there's a curve to the earth but there's inarguably a curve to the bridge. So I'll be over there shortly and I'll be able to uh, to film our first attempt at getting this contraption going. All right, so now I'm here. I've got my little pliers out. Actually, they're Trevor's pliers. But I've um, uh, got my can out. I'm gonna cut a little length here, uh, or cut a big length here. Cut this uh, cord at uh, far enough across that we should be able to string it through the, the can. I got a washer that Trevor gave me, and. I'm going to attach this end here. Actually, I got to put it through the through the can first. So, let's see if I can do that. And then um, tie it off. So here we've got this end here, and try to let's see. How do I want to do that? Let's see if I can put this. Sorry, but. Sorry about that, I lost, uh, lost the ability the, to hold the can and, and do the thing at the same time. But here we are, we've got at least one walkie-talkie here across the Cumberland. And Trevor, can you hear me? Trevor, can you hear me? I think it's gonna be hard to get enough tension up here. That seems to be our, our trouble is the tension. But I'll try to... Uh, <laughs> I'll try to uh, I'll try to stand and, and lift it up across one of these uh, that's the hard part is, is, a, is the tension I, I, that's kind of what I thought from the beginning would be the, the hardest part uh, Trevor thinks it could work but I think we do have to get the tension high enough up so I'll try that so here we are at however many feet this is maybe uh, 100 feet or something uh, and we've we've got it working at this far. So it didn't work all the way across the river uh, Somehow we couldn't get it up. The tension was too too high to be able to get it off the ground But now using this method of the can uh, Threaded through the the, the the rope threaded through the can Bringing the spool with me and letting it unroll as I go farther. We were actually able to hear each other at this length I don't have enough hands unfortunately to hold it while I'm speaking but we're gonna try further now, see if we can get it at least halfway across the river. Here we are at a greater distance now than we had before. I've tied the, we've got the spool going through the can, and I've actually tied the, uh, looped the, the uh, thread right in the middle of it, the rope, to this metal washer. So we'll see that go in there, and then we'll try to see if, if Trevor can hear us all the way, it's about halfway across the bridge now. 
actually a little more than halfway by this point. Uh, we're going to see how much tension I can hold on this with my arm while I'm still talking to him. Trevor, can you hear me? It's real quiet, but I can hear him. Can the video hear him? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't believe it's actually working. This is quite a distance here. This is probably, we're about halfway across the river. I'm increasing tension to see if it can work. Can you hear me? You want to talk? Yeah. We got a, a bystander here who's going to come and say something. Hello, can you hear me? He's not talking at the moment. Let's see. Trevor, can you talk again, please? You hear him? I heard Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> what an experiment. Uh, we have disassembled for the day. Uh, we we made our attempt. And Trevor, what did, what did we find? We found out that we can do it, but only at about half of the Cumberland. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, the physical strength to lift the, the rope off the ground and keep the tension on it all the way across. It's a lot more tension than we realized. But at about halfway, uh, we could still hear sounds, what sounded like a human speaking, but it definitely got to the point that it wasn't words anymore. Yeah. But half, cans across half the Cumberland. Cans across half the Cumberland. Wait, I had, I think we both had strangers asking us, is it working, is it working? <laughs> people we, were very interested. Very interested, and I, I had people asking me, and I kept saying, not yet, not yet. One guy actually did stop in and talk to Trevor yeah, he talked halfway to across the Cumberland, which I thought to be a huge success. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so maybe next time we'll try to do it with some sort of, I don't know, I had talked about trees. A rope and pulley system. Here. Pulley system, we might need pulleys. So if anybody's got some pulleys out there, send them our way. So, Jen, thank you for your help. Trevor, thank you for spearheading this. And uh, if you're watching from home, thank you for tuning in. Oh, yeah. And unrelated, um, I had decided to put a message into a bottle and float it down the Cumberland River. Um, I did check the dams, and I think it'll get pretty far. And I think even with the dams, it might actually navigate those accidentally or incidentally as the water gets put through anyway. So. I chose to uh, execute that project the same day that we did the tin can walkie-talkies. Um, so I'll give you a quick video here and a couple stills of, uh, of me uh, putting the finished product of the message in a bottle. A uh, bottle secured from my friend Rob that I hike and write songs with uh, because he cooks with white wine, as uh, some of you know I don't drink uh, anymore. Um, so. Thanks to Rob for the bottle, and uh, apologies to the metropolitan uh, government and city area for polluting with one bottle and a message in it. But hopefully the person who finds it is an environmentalist and uh, not only saves the uh, message and writes to me, because I included my po post office box address, but recycles the bottle. Here it goes. Thank you.